Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Erin and I do mostly budgeting videos like the one you're about to see here. First things first, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate you spending some time with me out of your busy day um, to follow along with me on my budget journey. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to be going over today's first June paycheck for my regular job, and I will be breaking that down and letting you know how I am allocating all of those funds for cash envelopes and variable expenses, and then also for July's bills since I am paying ahead. So I'm going to bring everything down to a zero-based budget, which is my preference. I like giving every incoming dollar a job and a function so I don't kind of misspend or I don't know get sloppy with it at all not that that is a thing but that's a thing for me so unless I give um, a purpose to all of our money I'm very tempted to say oh well this is extra you know maybe I can just use it for this or for that and that is a slippery slope for me. So first of all, I do have the money from the bank. Um, this is separate from what I did yesterday. If you tuned into yesterday's uh, videos, I went over um, my Grubhub and Instacart side incomes, and those come on Wednesday and Thursdays every week. Uh, and I say every week, it's only my third paycheck with Grubhub and first with Instacart. Instacart was just a teeny tiny little one, but it was my first order and I was on the cutoff, so I got paid for that. Um, I did go ahead and populate or add to my sinking funds. So all of those are organized. And it, even if I don't add anything for the rest of this month, I think that I'm still doing pretty good, um, you know, considering the situation. So um, those are all settled. So if you're interested in that, I did do a separate video on these because I like keeping things segmented and separate because it just saves time and also not everyone is as interested in the income side as they are in the variable expenses and the cash stuffing and so on and so forth. So I'm trying to keep everything separate but organized so um, anyone who's interested can tune in to the part that they are most drawn to or the part that could most help them. So I have my money here and I'm going to open up. I did have a few questions and I wanted to address them. And just um, just so you know, until I catch up with comments, I will absolutely be trying to address um, some of the, the bigger questions or the main questions in future videos. So this is a happy planner. It is um, a big happy planner, like with the watercolors, watercolor pattern design. This is what the dividers look like. I really, really pretty. Love it. I bought this last year when the 18 month planners came out and this is working perfectly for me. So what I did, I popped out or I popped off the original cover for it and then I replaced it with this tool cover. So tool is spelled T-U-L and they make a line of notebooks and now planners too. I believe you can find them at um, Office Depot, Office Max, and I'm sure other places, including Amazon. I looked high and low for this particular cover. As you can see, it has um, some foiling underneath the laser cut pattern, um, but this one is called Brill and it's the rose gold. So it is a hard cover. It is very sturdy and very, um, very substantial. So the back is also the exact same thing, which I like. I think the, that gives it a nice detailing to have that nice pattern on the front and the back and then you see the name is down below so i believe this is a leather cover if it's not it's pleather i can't remember for sure but this came in other colors tool tool i'm talking about the brand too um, but it is um, by the brand tool and the pattern is called brilliance i tried to find it but i wasn't able to link it i think it may have been discontinued these are just happy planner discs in the metal and this is also like pink or rose gold all right so jumping into that i also received another question um somebody had asked me if my job was furloughed or if i took a pay cut it's both so i have been furloughed a certain amount of work hours days and that is equal my pay cut. So I'm not just taking a pay cut for the sake of it. I'm not, my, my hourly rate isn't going down. They are actually 
taking away time that will be working. And you know what? That gives me more time to do my side hustle. So, you know, I'm just trying to make the best of everything and see the upside to it. And even though it is difficult right now and things are a bit crazy, there's still some kind of silver lining and things that you have to look for. And so that's kind of, you know, my take on it and, and the way I feel about it at this moment. Anyway, I'm just going to try and roll with it as it comes. So this was last week's and you can see this is how I set it up. Sinking funds, cash envelopes, and then here was my plan for um, what I am allocating for the next month's bills. And I am paying my bills ahead of time. Um, one month in advance and it was something that I've always wanted to do but I wasn't able to do it until we got our stimulus money and I really tried to think hard you know what do we want to do with that stimulus money how can we best use it and I thought you know what let's get a month ahead as far as our regular bills go and let's try and figure out you know how we can I don't know, like I said, just best get ahead. And I used it to pay all of May's bills. So once May rolled around, I was able to go ahead and then use that money and start putting it towards June's bills. And that's how I'm doing, that's how I'm moving forward, so on and so forth. So yesterday, just as a recap, um, this is what I anticipated from Grubhub, and this was the actual payment, and I think I have Instacart listed too. No, I don't, but I have Instacart listed here. I thought I had it on the actual day. So yesterday's total for side income just for one week was eleven eighty thirty three, and so I rounded that down just to a flat eleven eighty, and I started to fund some of my sinking funds. So part of what's left of that is also going to fund my cash envelopes, which I'll be getting into. But I went ahead and I took eighty dollars toward Christmas. I took a dollar, which was in the bank, toward dogs, and then I just I just wanted to make that round. I didn't really add anything to it. I took a hundred and. 20, I added it to savings and I took 300 and I added it to the emergency fund. So these are my new sinking fund balances here. So for cash envelopes, um, it I also keep it pretty simple. And it just so happened that this layout of this big happy planner worked out perfectly because I have only been using four cash envelopes and four sinking envelopes for about a month now. And so I think that that has worked pretty well for me uh, because I get three of them are specific. And then I have the one that is a, like a catch-all. So miscellaneous is for anything that doesn't fit into these three. And savings is for anything that doesn't fit into these three. So I, I think it's it's working out pretty good. So here's my cash envelopes. And I will be um, stuffing those um, as we go along. But I wanted to mention you know, what I did with the first half of this money. Or I guess maybe a little bit better than half. Yeah. All right. So we, we had 1180 And that's what I'm going to start out with. And then I'm going to get into today's paycheck and talk to you about that too. So minus 80 for Christmas, minus, I'm not even going to put that $1 because that was just in the bank, minus 120 for savings and minus 300. So we're left with $680, okay? So I will tell you what I took out of the bank, 100, 200, 3, 4, 420, 440, 460, 480, 485. So let's minus 485. So that leaves us $195. All right. So let's go with the $195 first. So um, remaining, I'm going to call this remaining in bank. Okay. Because that is not money that I actually took out to stuff. It's money that I left in the bank so I could do some electronic payments and things like that. So I'm just going to, how should I do this? Um, let's just do that. All right, so we had 195, okay? And first things first, I have to pay my Discover, which is just under $90. So I am going to subtract that, which brings us down to 105. Okay. And then after that, my husband had a doctor's appointment and his copay is um, $25. So that brings us down to 80. 
um, and it was a web visit. And I also had a web visit and my copay is $15. So we have different insurance companies. So that brings us to 65 remaining. Okay, so after that, I have $25 that's going to charity because it's time for me to get back into that. And then that is $40 remaining. All right, so that brings us to that. Now let's talk about this 485 here. So I have allocated a few different um, purposes for all this and I have my envelopes and I have my post-its. So I'm going to use post-its again to kind of keep things on track. And the first thing I'm going to do is populate groceries and, you know, grocery shopping, food shopping, what have you. So I'm putting $100 into that. So we're going to write down food and $100. And we have some extra expenses this time. So I will talk to you guys about what that means and all that. So I am putting $100 into this little grocery envelope. And on the outside, I'm just going to put my little sticky that says food. All right. So let's take our $485 minus, oops, 45 minus 100 brings us down to 385. All right, and the next thing I'm going to stuff is $100 for Target. And we need so much stuff. Um, and this could be Target or Walmart, you know, it just depends. I'm just putting Target just because that's usually my go-to. Um, but this is going to be for all kinds of incidentals. So I need to get some paper towels. Um, I'm going to try my hardest to find some um, Clorox wipes, things like that. I need, um, we need to get some shampoo and um, I think Tylenol. We have like a lot on our list. So it, we're down to 285 with that. All right, so that is Target. I have a little list on the side here, so I wanna make sure that I don't forget anything. Um, so lots of incidentals, and I haven't been able to really do that, and plus we haven't needed it. That's the beauty of, you know, kind of being stuck at home, was I had plenty of time to go through all of our closets and cupboards and vanity and figure out all the things that we have. I was so excited. I am somebody who loves like little tiny bottles of shampoo and soaps and things like that, you know, from hotels. And over the years going on vacations, I always bring them home. Whatever is left and unopened, I love bringing them home. And some of them are really good stuff. So during quarantine, I even use that stuff and I felt so good about it. I was like, you know what? This is awesome. So, um, waste not want not. So I'm putting a hundred dollars aside for my mom. So her B-Day cake and B-Day gift. Okay. So I'm going to minus a hundred brings us down to 185. So I'm excited about that. We are going to celebrate her birthday this weekend. And I think that's going to be really nice and um, a much needed little get together, yeah, small get together, but still. All right, so I'm listing $100 for my mom's birthday. All right, so let me cross that out. <laughs> and then um, gas money, putting a little bit extra into gas. Somebody asked me if I'm accounting for like wear and tear on my car. No, and you know why? First of all, I have a lease and I'm not saying that that is ideal for this situation, you know, doing deliveries and putting miles and using all the gas, but this wasn't something that I ever anticipated in the very beginning, all these like delivery side hustles. I never anticipated in the beginning being something that I would stick with. Now that we're kind of going through the motions and realizing, you know, how lucrative it is, even if it's just for right now, it's giving me more things to think about, you know, like, can this be something that I do permanently? Um, even if it is, I don't know, um, 
uh, just maybe the weekends or just a couple evenings during the week, somebody did ask me how many, how many hours it took us to make the money that we were making. So as you can see, I had 1160 coming in from Grubhub. It takes a lot. Um, right now I'm working like seven to three for my regular job. So I'm putting in my eight hours. And then after that, during the evening, like usually around 3.30, because I'm pretty restless because I'm in the house all day. Um, usually around 3.30, uh, I turn the phone on. I wait for alerts, for delivery alerts. And I always try to sign up for a block. If I can't get a block, and some of you may know what that means, and some of you who aren't doing it may not. If I can't get a block, I still keep my, my phone on for alerts. So I'm working from about 3.30 till at least 9 o'clock. Um, nine o'clock is typical cutoff for me because uh, it does get dark and you know I'm, I'm tired by that time but honestly I don't feel too exhausted because the work I'm doing for my regular job right now until at least July is at home anyway so that's my only time to get out of the house so if you figure let's just do let's just say four to nine that's five times five that's five times five is 25 hours during the week and then on the weekends I leave my phone on probably at least 12 hours so I might do 8 to 8 or 9 to 9 um, I'm probably not delivering consistently during that time and if I'm not signed up for a block I'm not obligated to take an order but let's just say plus 24 more hours that's 49 hours so it takes me a long time to make this money. Sometimes I might be working 30 hours. Sometimes I might be working that many hours. It just depends and it depends on how busy it is. So I hope that kind of clear, clarifies that and answers that question. Um, and now I'm, now I'm screwed up on my money. Um, 485, let's start again. 45 minus 100 minus 100 minus 100. All right, so we're down to 185 minus 60 is 125 so gas I'm putting 60 so have I thought about my long-term plan like you know like how this will affect my car or do I need a different car maybe a used car or something like that mm -mm. no so far no I haven't thought about it I do need to think about it because um if it's worth it I'm gonna keep doing it so 485 minus 100 minus 60 minus 25 for dog food minus 200 okay so we're down to a hundred dollars so this is our little dog food envelope um and that's sometimes why these videos take a while too because i do have a lot to explain and um i have a lot going on right now like everyone but it's a lot to organize and keep up with too because i do have a regular job and i do have this you know side income that i'm trying to make work and I have two different sources for that right now and I'm also trying to film these videos as best as I can I hope that um, you guys are enjoying them and the way I'm doing them and um, you know just other things too so it's a lot but it's okay it's keeping me busy and it's keeping my mind off things so lastly we have a veterinary appointment for Olive and she has some problems with her legs. Um, and I'm afraid that it's, you know, like an orthopedic problem. So we're going to have to, well, we do have an appointment to take her. And um, my husband will be taking her today and figuring out, you know, what's going on. So these three things I'm going to put in the miscellaneous envelope. And that's why I'm using the post-it so I can keep track of them that way. And then if I don't use it all, I can note on the post-it, maybe the visit was only $75 or what have you. Um, I'm going to actually tuck this under so this fits better. And then that's that. Now I did have a couple dollars extra from my cash envelopes last week. And I didn't talk about what I did with it because it wasn't like substantial money or anything like that. But I just had it in cash and I drove through Panera and I got my iced teas. You know, that's all I did. Um, I'm not a very exciting person and there's not a whole heck of a lot going on, but that's what I did. All right, so let's get to today's paycheck. So it was 15, 14. Now next paycheck, it should be less. Next paycheck should be my first one um, that is going to be at a reduced rate. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 1,500 into July bills equals $14. And then this extra $14 I'm probably just gonna pop that out of the bank, put it toward gas, or you know, pay for something with my debit card with that. And that is just going to be like an incidental remaining amount. So I'm bringing that down to 14. And you know what, let, let's just say 14 is, um, I'm just gonna call this pocket money. Whether, like I said, whether I take it out of the bank or I use it with my debit card. And then that's gonna bring my budget down to zero base. So I'm just going to put here, July bills. Okay. So on June 5th, I'm going to add $1,500. Okay, so that's what I have. Now, my July bills are $26.50 approximately, so minus $1,500. That means I need $1,150 before July 1 to make all my bills ready to go, all the funding for it by July 1st. Um, and again, I'm trying to pay everything on the first of every month so that's how much I'm going to need to come up with for next month. All my bills for June are paid, thank God. Um, so all of this money I can use for variables. I can use it for, you know, whatever comes up. Obviously, you saw this week we have some unusual expenses um, or just not typical, not unusual. But, um, you know, we have birthdays, doctor's visits and things like that. So, um, you know, what have you. But at least this is the only remaining amount that we have to come up with for the rest of the month for July. So yeah, I'm very excited. So um, I'm gonna put needed, just so I can keep track, 26.50. All right, and that is my entire budget. So let's go ahead and color code some things just to make it look nice. This is my cash envelopes here. Then down here, we'll use these fat, chunky little highlighters. I love these so much. I do have these linked below. I have a whole set of these. They're just like little tiny things, um, but they're super cute and they are very, um, what can I say? Uh, kind of subtle, they're like pastel-y colors, which I really like. Um, so I'm going to highlight that, this, my amounts, I'm trying to keep track of my amounts, oh, see, that's one thing I didn't add. So I didn't add $100 for all of. So I catch myself. You guys probably catch me before I do, to be honest. <laughs> you guys are probably like, wait. Um, so here's my remaining in bank. And then $40. Yeah, okay, yeah, looks good. It looks pretty, pretty, pretty good. So that $40, I don't think I allocated that, but that's okay. I will. Um, even if I roll it over until next payday, which is something that I might do. In fact, I'm going to make a note of this. Roll over. And I'm going to highlight that too. Let's get a different color because... When I go look at my bank account, which I do very often, I, I check my bank account at least once a day. Um, and that's a really smart habit to get into because you wanna make sure that nobody has hacked into your account and like there's nothing funny going on. Um, but that is going to be my note that that $40 is now allocated to roll over to next week. So that is nice. Um, $14 in pocket money. All right, so that's it. Yeah, because I had 1514, I took 1500 out for July bills. It gave me, four. yep, okay, perfect. That's it. So that is 
my entire system. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit complicated right now, but it's a lot to keep track of for me. So um, this is really the best I can do with it at the moment. Where is, hmm. I'm missing a page, guys. Where did I? <laughs> oh my gosh, I swear. You know how everybody says, oh, if my head wasn't attached, like I would lose that too. That's the way I feel lately. Oh, okay, I understand what's happening now. All right, so here is June. And I do need to populate um, some figures in the June layout, but these actually go at the end of May. So yep, now I'm all set. I have my envelopes ready to go. I have some shopping to do. My sinking funds are complete and I am all situated. So thank you so much for watching. If anybody is still here to this very end, um, I really appreciate it. Uh, please, you know, keep leaving your comments and things like that because I do enjoy reading them and I am going to try and get back to everybody very soon. And um, if you have any questions, of course, leave them down below too. And if you enjoy this video, please leave it a big thumbs up. That really helps my channel. And if you haven't already subscribed, I would love if you stuck around and did so. It would mean a lot. And hopefully you're all doing very well. And I'll see you next time. Take care.